My talk is called uh, Giving, Taking, Creating. Uh, I teach, I write poetry, I, I act, um, but I spent most of my life taking what I wanted. Uh, I would take happiness, I would take freedom, uh, and I would take pleasure at the expense of, of hurting the, the people around me. Um, then some major changes happened in my life. Uh, I had to drop out of drama school after a couple of years because I couldn't pay the fees. My parents got divorced. Uh, I went to prison for a year. I learned, I learned a lot, and I realized how important it is to give. And today I'm going to talk about how I use my art to do that. It's only when you, when you understand how to give that, 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 it's only when you've been through stuff that you can understand how to give, yeah. Okay, so I was in East Timor in September, uh, and it, it was to do work with the community, uh, fantastic bunch of kids. <laughs> uh, it, it was really, really good. You can probably see in this photo, like, I'm the happiest child out of all of them. Uh, I got so much more than I, than I put in, though, from that trip. I learned so much in, in Timor-Leste. I, I learned uh, about underdevelopment and poverty. Uh, I'd never seen it before, and I'd never seen the UN before, because uh, there's heavy, heavy UN influence still in the country. Um, one of the things we did was meet with a minister for natural resources, uh, and he told us about the situation in his country, which is basically that there's this multitude of wealth and gold uh, and oil, but they don't have the internal resources to process it. They don't have the manpower that's able to, to make it to make it gold, to make it to make it money, right? Uh, and there's no transparency as well. So I felt very strongly about this, and, and I wrote a poem. It's called uh, it's called For East Timor. Uh, here it is. If a single seed is what I'm given, this is what I'll sow. A filigree of organized ink upon a blank white page, a canvas for the creation from a voice come to fruition from conflict, unrest, unrested. If all I have is this piece of wood from a fallen tree, upon sprawling, dilapidated grounds full of color and art. This is what I'll carve. Grooves of a nation's seabed in the middle of a contested ocean, a billow of viscous liquid darkened with a pigment of green, drills pummeling deep into the earth to break it apart and gather richness from its well, a bucket seven, eleven till heaven fold, full of money which won't go where it should. If all I can use is one word, this is what it'll be. Injustice. The tons upon tons of wet wealth piped to the wrong place, potential left unused, underutilized, refined by foreign intervention, funding decorations to already existing infrastructure, already existing buildings, already existing schools, already existing hospitals, already existing, already existing, already existing, when all that exists in the land of the beautiful people is dirty streets, old cars, thin children receiving a useless education and insufficient sanitation. If all I could dream was a final dream, this is what it would be, staring into the face of this independent being with an endless ocean and an orange smile, swaying palm trees that dance with the tradition of giving love with the body and spirit, so open, hearts exposed to a stranger like me who is there to help a traveler but receives so much more. If all I could dream was a final dream, what I would dream is this, 
equality, safety, provision, longer life, happiness from within, which shines through on the face of this living thing, beauty that everyone could see. If all I could exhibit was one last photograph, this is the picture I would take. Everything I have seen, so all of you would know. If I could do one last thing, I would have to choose between so many. But in the few moments before the sun sets, this is for Timo Lester. Okay. That was actually supposed to be on while I was saying the poem. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is a, a beautiful beach um, that, that was close to where we were living. We were living in the, in the town of Jilly. Um, what was I trying to give with that poem? I was trying to tell a story which needed to be heard, which I believe needed to be heard. Uh, a state which could be so much better if it was, if it was able to get there. Um, was I getting anything in return? Here's how it makes sense to me. Carlo Gibran, one of my favorite writers, and I was gonna say favoritist, uh, writers and philosophers, said this in one of his many poems. To me, it's something I battled with for a really, really long time as, as, a, as an educator, as a performer. What is conceited and what is not? Uh, when I was in drama school, people always talked about self-indulgence, being self-indulgent. I never wanted to be self-indulgent. Um, appreciation for art is, is so subjective, isn't it? Like, each of us have, have different interpretations of the work that we see. Sometimes we appreciate it, sometimes we don't because we can't connect with it. And when I, when I write poetry that's for myself, um, I justify it by saying, well, everyone has the same kind of emotion. So if I'm just talking about something that an emotion someone can connect to, then they should understand. But I don't think this is always true. When I'm up there in front of a big group of people, like I am now, um, what's going on? What's the relationship between the audience and performer? What's the relationship between a piece of art and a viewer? People are looking at you, expecting you have something valuable to provide them. They want to, they want to feel, they want to learn. Why are all of you here? You think it's possible that someone, someone here today who has stood where I'm standing might, might tell you something beautiful, might tell you something inspirational, might tell you something funny. Do I or, or any of the other speakers get off on this? Uh, maybe, maybe. This position tells me I am special. I am someone. I matter. It's an entire room, an entire auditorium giving that to me. So it is so important that what you are providing is valuable and this has to be value that reaches out to each and every person or at least that's something that I hope for every time I, I perform uh, and how do you do that all art needs to be a story that you believe needs to be told okay I'd love to tell you all my stories if I did that uh, I yeah you'd probably get, get rather bored um, <laughs> but you each story connects with at least one person in the room, if that's what you choose to do, just connect to one person as opposed to everybody. Um, but stories that are universal and, and contain crucial moral messages reach out to everybody. Any person with any ounce of humanity will feel for exploitation or, or abuse or people who have been silenced. Art is a tool for telling people about situations that they don't know. Art is a tool for creating awareness. Sometimes I think I, I'm so gratifying myself because I'm, I'm up here telling you things that I believe are important. I write about what I think should be changed, what I think is wrong, what should be heard. But to me, that's so much better than, than writing about my life when there's still the lives of 
seven billion other people on this planet and these beautiful children to discover. I guess I do most of my giving in the classroom. Um, everyone who creates, I think, has a responsibility to pass it on, to pass on their craft, to keep it alive and to, and to grow it for themselves and, and for other people that they give it to. It's another way to, to maintain the balance. I get so much from students. I get affirmation that I'm a good teacher, that I have a purpose. Sometimes I don't get to help as much as I wish. There was a, there's one student in one of my classes who did not speak. And I only got to see her for three weeks because the school cut the classes. And this was right when I felt I was beginning to connect with her. Um, so the only thing I could do was <laughs> write a poem. And, uh, and this, is, uh, this is called, Where is My Voice? Where is my voice? Have you seen her? I cannot find my voice. Have you heard her? The first time she made herself known, I was but an infant, milliseconds old, and out she came from shallow in my chest to dance upon the ears of the theater. My mother, my doctor, with her shrill sound, unafraid. Where is my voice? Have you seen her? I cannot find my voice. Have you heard her? I remember how I looked upon her joyful noise a few years past in the cacophonous playground as she was bouncing off the sand and sky, perched upon a yellow rubber ball, not another laughing child able to catch her. So I ask, where is my voice? I cannot find her. Perhaps she got lost one night when darkness blinded her and a dirty cloth muffled her screams when Nobody heard her come to any good use when she wanted to be heard most of all, so it didn't make sense to be heard again. Perhaps that is when my voice decided to not come back. <sighs> Because of my own life, uh, I really connected with this girl, and I really felt like I had to tell her story. Uh, I, I think the effects that, that parenting have on a child or the, the home situation are always so important and, and impactful on the development of everybody, and, and we all know this, it's obvious. <laughs> um, I couldn't spend time with her, but I can still tell her story, and that's, that's what I've chosen to do. I believe that if you're in education, you can't ignore indicators that something is wrong in, in, a, child's, in a child's life. Um, so I've, I've performed two poems that, are, that, are, that were for me to give, for me to tell stories that were about other people. Uh, so I thought that to achieve maybe some kind of balance, but still more giving, obviously, uh, I, would, uh, I would perform something that I wrote about myself. Um, this poem is called, My Heart is an Oyster, and it especially goes out to, to the women in this room. Uh, I'm not being sexist. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's because this is about being alone. It's about being lonely. I mean, everyone can connect to this, but uh, it's about feeling like nobody will ever appreciate you for what you are. <laughs> My heart is an oyster, a thousand years old, building so large a pearl that it may be sold. Will a kind patron please buy my used hired soul? It's ancient and crusty, but still worth some gold. It's not very pretty, <laughs> but comes from the best shell and from its marbled colors, a story does tell. 
It's been through harsh currents, but still did survive. Its mothering oyster kept it alive. Yet time and again comes hunter with net, and as by it he swims, my shell he forgets. It beckons him, it does, to gather me with his crop. But the ones that he did from his grasp, I did drop. So alone here I lie on this bed of dark sand without patron for my soul or buyer for my pearl. And my heart is an oyster a thousand years old. In it contains a lone soul. Will a kind patron please buy my used tired soul? It's ancient and crusty, but still worth some gold. Um, before I leave, um, I'm just going to kind of reiterate my point and make it succinct. I, I think I kind of went around in circles earlier. Uh, how do you make art a balance? Give yourself more through other people's <coughs> stories than your own. Receive as a byproduct of giving, primarily, and keep creating to grow and pass on your craft to other people. And last of all, whatever you make, do it with your heart more than anything else. Thank you.